Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. I just woke up, so let's get to it. The Begnian Empire, the largest nation on the continent, is the theocracy dedicated to the goddess Ashera. Well, isn't that nice? Oh yeah, this girl. Reigning from the summit of the empire and guiding the world with the voice of the goddess, the Apostle Sanaki rules Begnian. As Ashera's chosen vessel, the Apostle is showered with love and respect from the entire nation. Seven Imperial Senators aid the Apostle in the governance of her realm. The system of government has been the backbone of Begnian for many long centuries. After Ike and his company aid the Apostle, her Holy Guard takes them to the Imperial capital, Sienne. Sienne? I don't know. The upper class of Begnian society live lives of pampered comfort and luxury. Must be nice. Pampers. Whoops, I double pressed A by accident. Okay. Surrounding the tower is a series of temples, both large and small, placed in an orderly, systematic fashion. One temple, however, is conspicuously larger than the others. It is the Grand Temple Manal, home to the Apostle. Ike and his company, used to the freedoms of Crimea, find the differences in culture and custom to be very confusing. Jump-a-chomp, jump-a-chomp. Yes, so welcome back. It is chapter 14 training. This one's not too bad. We get a new unit, though. After a whole lot of dialogue, I think. I think this is like part of the, one of the longer sections of the game. Ahem. Now then, you have proclaimed yourself to be the orphan of Cremia's King Ramon, Princess Alintia Riddell Cremia, right? I have heard stories that King Crimea had a daughter in secret. My men have reported as much to me in the past. However, whether you are that princess or not is another tale. Do you have nothing that would lend credence to your claims? Nothing at all. It took all my energy simply to avoid capture by day, and I had no time to secure any proof of my claim. Hmph, and with the Crown Prince Renning also dead, there is no one to, who even knows your face. What am I to do? I will vouch for her. My Lord Ike! I have no doubt that Princess Alencia is the true heir to the throne of Crimea. Oh really? And tell me what gives you this strength of conviction. If we believe her story, this woman has not engaged with the outside world since the day she was born. So how is it that you, a lowly mercenary, dare to assert her authenticity? The day an army pursues her with bloody-minded determination. At every turn they demand that we turn Princess Alencia over to them. What further proof do you need? Hmm, if someone of proper standing made that pronouncement, I would accept it as irrefutable proof. But you, you're a commoner. You have no surname, no documented lineage. You have nothing. I know commoners. They are poor. For a price, they will support any lie, no matter how outlandish. This music is crazy. So now, I suppose you will tell me you are the son of some noble house? No, of course not. But wait, perhaps you're a royal knight of Crimea? I am neither a noble nor a knight. I have no connection with the palace whatsoever. And no matter how much gold I stood to gain, I would not betray my convictions. Alintia has paid us, yes, but nothing more than the standard fee to purchase our services as her escort. Nothing more. We have come this far only because we believe Alintia to be a woman of integrity. We would not sell our swords to a liar. I don't care how high and mighty you might be, I will not stand here and let you mock the bond of trust that lies that ties us to Alencia. My Lord Ike! How dare you! Who are you to address the Apostle so crudely? Guards! Guards! Seize this man for his abuse of the Apostle! The penalty can only be death! Halt! Seferin was right about you. You are very interesting. Apostle? Seferin, the monk we rescued from the prisons? A monk, was it? His disguises are always so clever. It never ceases to amaze me. As always, he remains an enigma. 
Heed my words. Seferan is in truth Duke Belsis, Prime Minister of Begnian and my most trusted advisor. Belsis, I guess. Prime Minister of Begnian. He has been traveling the neighboring lands for months trying to ascertain the condition of the people there. We have received detailed reports on Princess Alencia and the mercenary company serving as her escort. So, you knew we were coming? You knew who we were all along? Yes, I apologize for testing you. You see, life here in the palace is dreadfully dull. I'm always so very bored. Thanks to the princess and her brazen little escort, this interrogation proved to be an amusing diversion. Oh, so that's what this was. How very like you, Apostle. A cunning game of wits and words, simply smashing. Even your most loyal servant, Duke Oliver of Tannis, was on the verge of being completely fooled. I am humbled. Oh, come, Duke Lacane. It was all a ruse, was it? Oh, Apostle, you do tease us so mercilessly. Mercilessly. Still, it was not such a bad way to amuse yourself, was it, Duke Hetzel? Oh, too good. <laughs> Princess Crimea, it appears that you have put a quiet smile on the face of our beloved Apostle. What an honor that must be. Um, yeah, I suppose. Madness! Oh yes, I almost forgot. In all the fun, Seferin has already vouched for your identity as the true Princess of Crimea. I require no further proof. You may rest easy. I am most grateful wait a minute yes what is the meaning of this you knew Valencia was Princess Crimea and you continued to humiliate her for your own entertainment for some stupid game of wits and words this is no joke Valencia's homeland is lost to her her family has been hunted down and killed by the monsters of day and and with nowhere else to turn, she endures mortal danger and terrible heartbreak to reach your door. And then you, you laugh at her? Where is the humor in that? Where is your decency? You're horrible. You are all horrid people. You disgust me beyond words. And you owe Alincia a proper apology. My Lord Ike, please. Wretched peasant, you loose that treacherous tongue once more and... Duke Lacane, restrain yourself. But... I am speaking, be still. Now then, Ike, I truly, I fully understand your feelings. Your passion for the employer is truly a beautiful thing. Would that my own fawning vassals shared your commitment? What? Would that my own fawning vassals? However, truth be told, your behavior does test my patience. Raise your voice once more to me and you will seriously damage the princess's already precarious position. Do you understand? Not really, why don't you fill me in? Even if Valencia is truly Crimean royalty, she is at best heir to a dead country, nothing more. Without Begnian's support, Valencia's claim holds no meaning, am I mistaken? Even if we harm her fragile feelings for the sake of her country's future, she must stand by and say nothing. In fact, she is in no position to do anything but beg for Begnian's favor. Or hadn't you noticed? I have much to consider. For now, I shall take my leave of you. I will meet with my senators soon and discuss this state of affairs. Crimea's future will not be uncertain for long. Until that time, I suggest you rest and relax. Perhaps you could try your hand at our country's games, of, our courtly games of wit and words. Mmm. What incredible nerve to take advantage of our situation and speak down to us like that. I don't care if she's the Empress or the Apostle or whatever, I can't stand her! Listen, Ike, isn't it impossible- isn't it possible that the Apostle saved you? What? Titania is correct, Begnian is a nation ruled by time-honored custom and ancient conventions. You insulted the Apostle, the very symbol of their way of life. The fact that you are still breathing is a miracle. I hadn't realized. And as her escort, your criminal behavior would fall directly on your employer, Princess Alencia. If you had truly angered the Apostle, any hope of restoring Crimea would have vanished like a puff of smoke. That's madness! They would sacrifice a whole country to satisfy their own egos? Ike, this may not be much of an answer, but letting madness rule the day is the prerogative of nobility. 
The Bjork divide themselves into classes, and with classes comes prejudice. From the moment of our birth to our final dying gasp, we commoners, we are not allowed to defy the upper classes. Princess Alencia, I'm sorry. My ignorance does not excuse my stupidity. I truly am sorry. No, I, what you said in my defense and in my honor, it made me very pleased. Huh? To see you so angry on my behalf, your words filled my heart. It wasn't as noble as you make it sound. However, there is one point that I would contest. It is true that I've lost my family and my home. But I did not... But I did have people to turn to, people to rely on. My Lord Ike, you and your company were at my side. For me, this has been a great source of inspiration and happiness. Princess of Alencia. My Lord Ike, please call me Alencia. Huh? That would be improper, wouldn't it? I mean, you're our employer, and... You called me so earlier. I did? Really? You didn't notice? No, I... Oh, my apologies. I'll be more careful. Well, I suppose we should go. They prepared rooms for us. My Lord Ike. Here's the summary of our last battle. We gained Astrid, not Gatry? Why isn't Gatry in there? Earned 5,000 gold. I wonder how that spent... I don't know how he spent that much. Oh, I did buy weapons, didn't I? Unless opening chests was also a thing. I don't know. Ah, yes. Info, servant. Let's just take a quick look at all these. You want to hear something? There's a rumor about subhumans. Yeah, there's tigers in this chapter. But we're not gonna fight them because we like the animals. Always in beast form, because it's wearing a demi band. Let's see what Gatry has to say. Out for a walk. Hello, Gatry. Start to feel depressed in that gaudy room. That gaudy body room. Oh, he's looking at flowers as in women. Uh, what's Marcia have to say? Marcia is the one who's going to recruit somebody for us this chapter. It's her brother, finally. Being in Begnion is difficult because you were a member of the Pegasus Knights. Aren't you happy to see your old friends? No. It's embarrassing. I resigned my knighthood, haven't I? Because you're searching for your brother. That no good chum bucket? There you go. And Astrid, hey, that she had a lot to say, didn't she? Sorry. Uh, let's set, all right, let's actually read this. Uh, Oscar's su A support conversation. Oscar, what is it? Are you well, Ike? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Why did I worry you? No, no, it's nothing that you did. It's just that our, our battles are intensifying. I never imagined that we'd be involved in clashes of this magnitude. You're right, ever since my father died, it's been one kind of chaos after another. It's a real challenge. So how are you doing? Well, I mean, are you as well as can be expected? Is there anything I can do? Oscar, I give you enough grief as is. Just stick with your helplessly green commander, that's all I ask. Will you continue to believe in me? Yes, of course. As Commander Grail said, we are family. This is my home. I will support you to the end. I have an urge for your cooking tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I... Pressed A too fast. Uh. Oh, she he's got leaf. We gotta do it, man, because she's cute. Hiya, hi hmm, who's there? Training hard. Leaf, were you watching me? Yep, I'm curious. Our future success will depend in large part on how well you humans fight. We Lagoos can't afford to lag behind. You always need the upper hand, eh, Leaf? Relax, it's not like I'm gonna claw you in the back during a battle. There's no point in it. Besides, you humans are the only ones who use dirty tricks like that. Oh, I see. So every Lagoose fights fair and square? Most of us, not all. Although we know when a Lagoose is about to use a cheap trick, we can smell it. I can sniff out a trap from a mile away, even in the dark. You can hide from my eyes, but not my nose. Leaf? Will you teach me how to fight like a Lagoose? Sure, I'll take you on, but it's going to hurt. When I fight, it's with claws out. Good, I look forward to it. Yeah. 
I forget who else has support conversations with Ike, but he's gonna run out of chances anyway. I guess that's about it. Let's take a drink. All right, well, what else are we gonna do? Are we gonna cut this out or are we gonna show it? Let's show it. You're with me for the long haul. Let's put the longbow away. Hellfire and Longsword, Speedwing. Soth actually did pretty good that chapter. Killer Bow, Lagoo's Axe, Occult Energy Drop. Gatry is here, okay. And then it's our usual nothing party that we're not using. So, what we need to do is look at people's strength. 14 could be better. Ike could do more damage. Mia is also 14. So Ike is a recipient of the energy drop. Even though Mia and Marcia could be. You gotta think about the Black Knight later on, so I'm giving it to Ike. Heck, the speed wing too, maybe. Oh no, his speed's maxed out. Okay, so... Strength raise to 16! Uh, that was close. I almost used the speed wing by accident. I think it lets you too, even though you're maxed out. So who needs speed? 18... 21... 19... 19... 15? Wow, Leaf isn't as fast as I thought! I'm thinking Leaf! Before she falls off too much, we need to have her always double. She's so freaking cute, man! With that choker on and those ears. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just being stupid. I think her speed can cap out at something greater than 20 because she's a Lagoose. Let's award experience. It's time. We can't afford any more. Mist needs help. This, I suppose, I could cut out, but I like seeing the numbers, man. So you're gonna watch them with me. We're gonna crank her up. All the way to level 20. Ah, eh, maybe I will cut it out. Oh, we have just enough, man. There it is, level 20. We actually can't get her to level 21, so we have to use a Master Seal on her. Okay. It's not a complete waste. I can't believe that worked out exactly. Statue Frag would be a good choice for her, too, to increase her constitution. But she turns into a horse now. She's a Valkyrie or whatever. She's a cleric. Turns into a Valkyrie. Now she has a giant pony. Movement went up by three, so that's good. And now she can use swords. But, like, rank E or something? Oh, D! Hey. Let's get the slim sword from Mia. 
because we want her to attack twice, and Mist is a lightweight. So we'll just have her use the Slim Sword for a while. Doesn't that sound good? Yes. Okay. Um. Now we have no bonus experience, so we can't work with Jill. We can't work with uh, anybody. Rolf. I'm kind of curious about Elf on it. Well, nah. Let's go. I am so bored. We've been here for five days already, and there's absolutely nothing to do. They gave me free reign to wander the temple, but I've seen everything. I'm tired of it. I take it Princess Alencia has been invited to yet another social gathering. A little time off is one thing, but this. I guess I'll get in some fencing practice. Ike, the captain of the Apostles' Holy Guard, is headed this way. I beg your pardon. Are you and your mercenary company enjoying your stay here in Begnian? Is there anything you find wanting? There's nothing to do in Mr's board. Ike, why did you say that? Weren't you just complaining about that exact same thing to me? You said you were bored and tired of everything. That doesn't mean you should go spouting it to everyone. Oh, you're such an idiot, Ike. My apologies. Neither of them meant any offense. They're just frustrated. Yes, I understand that. I will pay it no mind. Did you have some reason for coming to speak with us? I bring word from the Apostle. She wishes to charge you with a task. The Apostle wants to employ us? I didn't expect this. Expect what? Your reaction. I'd have thought that you would be spouting and fuming at the thought of working for the Apostle. If Princess Alencia can tolerate endless social gatherings to judge Begnian's mood and garner her favor, the least I can do is help her earn points by running an errand or two. Ike, they're coming. So we lay in wait for them here, right? Yes, the Apostle's orders were clear. Stop the band of merchants traveling on the old highway and seize their cargo. This does look to be the best spot for an ambush. Alright, I don't know who we're facing, but we're on the job. Let's do this right. Hey, gameplay finally. Old Town Road, isn't that a song? A poor crop this time around. Cats, tigers, and a few crows. All we got are laborers. We're not going to get rich with this. I've been selling half-breeds for 25 years. The ones that fetch the highest price are trophy herons. Hmm. Why don't we hit Serene's Fortress next time? Forest. You've got the brains of a dead wyvern. Why do you think herons are so expensive? Because they're rare. It's been 20 years since that mob burned serenes. The herons were all roasted like chickens. No matter how you look at it, that was utter lunacy. All that gold up in smoke. Idiot. Shut up, fool. Stop your daydream and look over there. What? Who are they? Bah, look alive, lads. They're not common travelers. Here they come. The fog makes it hard to see. Yeah, on hard, there's actually fog of war here. All right, let's get to it. Choose who do we not need? That's the first question always. That's our main party. We don't need Vulcan Soth. We don't need Astrid. So 10 out of 13, we could roll with that. Put in uh, Mordecai. Mordecai and Jill. Yeah, I like that idea. Now we reposition them. Mordecai's in a good spot. Uh, what's her name? Marcia has to be over here because she's got to go to that side of the map. Mordecai could get that house. I guess everybody's alright. 
Laguz lands, huh? Yeah, there he is up there. The topmost horse unit. Move Boyd over. Just seeing what weapons they have. Some swords are what we need. Me and Ike, but Ike can't gain experience, so we don't really want to use him anymore until he can again. Alright, let's waste no more time. Let's do it. What do we got? Oh, this girl. She comes back. Toodle do, she said. Spirit dust, that increases magic, so we're giving that to Soren. Well, we could give it to Mist. It would affect her healing ability. But I think Soren would benefit. I didn't give a sword to Marcia. Crap. That was an oversight on my part. Killing edge, come on. No. Well, it was enough to kill him even without a critical. Leaf, what can you do? Beautiful. And she levels up, which means we get to see that cute picture again. Alright. I'm not a furry, I promise. Even though I like Star Fox a whole lot. Some people would probably think so. Let's see what Mist can do. Nine times two. Alright. Wow, baby experience. It's nice that we don't have to worry about mist anymore, though. Feels like it's been forever since we used Ike. This is smart. 11 times 2. Ooh, that hurt. I wasn't paying attention to that. Crap. Uh. Oscar, can you help us out? I guess we would need an axe with an axe. Which means sword guy's gonna attack him next turn. Unless Marcia is really that close to death. Boyd, go this way. Jill. What? I don't know what to do with Jill. Ah, oh, what terrible luck. My sixth sense told me the weather would be nice today. Grumbling and whining won't pay off your debt. Come on, beautiful. Cough up my gold. I'd dearly love to pay you, but unfortunately I'm broke. Threaten all you like. I can't give you what you want. Whatever. Makalov. Yeah, see, he's talking about his sister. Owie. Right. 
You're done. Marcia is gonna. Yeah. Marcia is not fragile. We have to look at her as a good unit now. But she does has, still have limited HP. Alright, well here we go. We're gonna recruit a new unit and not use him too. <laughs> b, b, b b brother Hey Marcia, long time, huh? Good timing though. I was just thinking about paying you a visit, sis. Long time? Long time, you dung heel! Where in the name of heaven have you been? You racked up all that debt and then ran away. You're such an irresponsible skunk. Thanks to your worthless hide, I had to leave the sacred Pegasus Knights. Huh? But why? Because there were a bunch of debt collectors hanging around the barracks, that's why. That's a shame. Listen, I was trying to increase the money I borrowed and pay off the original, but it, uh, vanished. And I swear that just kept happening. I'd almost get enough and then poof, gone. You rat, you cheese-eating rat, you haven't changed at all. Let's go, you're coming with me. With you? Where are we going? What am I gonna do? You're joining my company. I'm going to let Ike beat some sense into you. We'll see how that works. No, wait, I'm working for these guys at the moment, and, well, if I just joined up with the other side, it might cause problems. Stuff it, me. No more lame excuses. Follow me now! <laughs> All right, he's got a red gem on him. So we can sell that next chapter at the base. Ah, she can't use the steel sword. She needs iron. All right, well, we'll have him visit the house. Is? Did you say cattle? A battle? Stranger, what? Anyway. My tooth is starting to hurt again. Vantage, hey, we know that's good because Mia has it. Who else do we give Vantage to? I usually don't assign skills until like towards the end of the game when like I know, like I, that's not smart. It should, it's smart to know what you wanna do and do it as early as possible. That was a good critical. Who's Lance? Hey, Oscar can hang on to that. No, wait. Well, Nephany can't use it, probably. Oh, missed. That dude's hiding in the water. Sorry for yawning. Oh, Jill. We, we need to bonus experience her, and we don't have any. If we beat this chapter fast enough, we'll get a nice handful, though. I think there's a bonus for beating this in five turns. Nephany? like she's going for the bow. Yep. It's better than nothing. Yeah, we have too many units, man. Let's see. Boy doing his thing. Like Leaf is gonna, unless Mia can reach, get soaring up here. Lagoo's weapons up there, which is kind of scary, but Leaf is good, man. Yeah, that guy's got a Lagoo's bow. That's not good. But 
Leaf is fast, so maybe she'll dodge it. Hey you, why don't you lay down your weapons and walk out of here with your lives? You can posture as much as you want, but there's no way you can beat us. Shut it. I don't know why you're here, but if we lose our cargo, we lose everything. It ain't happening. You'll receive no mercy from us. Yes. They're crushing us. They're nothing but a pack of rats, but they fight like demons. There's no way they can stand up to a real monster. Release the feral. Yeah, this is... The first hint of Lagoos, but they don't move on this map. So, Makalov, what can you do to this guy? Garbage! Holy crap! He gets wrecked! I found this in the river, but my mom said it was dirty and I had to throw it away. You want it? Secret book. Yeah, that's skill for somebody. Hide in the bush and be useless to us until we can store you in the wagon forever. Twelve times two? She takes ten, though. What if we javelin? Hey, fourteen times two. I hate for him to rob the experience, but... The Oscar's gonna be better than Titania if he's not already. See if we could finish this guy off. Yeah, we can. Good job, missed. Job Mia. Yeah, I like Mia. I think we made a good choice raising her, even if they're technically our better sword masters. Actually, one of which we get next chapter. Uh, let's try to work on the thunder, I guess. Yeah. In preparation for bolting at some point. Put that to the convoy. might miss though well it's about time titania does something this guy's got a killer axe that's a little scary 18 times 2, 24 times 2, I would like to get that mage out of the way, but the fact that this boss character has a killer axe... Hmm... It's turn 3, we could finish it off with Leith and Titania. We miss out on some experience, but... If 
42% hit chance. A female females are good. You'll fetch a high price to the right buyer. I hate humans, but you are beyond that word. Simply killing you won't be enough. The pain, the suffering of my brethren, I will carve payment for that from your flesh. If only she could have gotten them. Yeah, why not? Yes, she's still a little bit better than Oscar, I guess. But the killer axe, she can use it, actually. Our duty's done. Let's grab the cargo and get out of here. The Grail mercenaries have returned. Well done. The news of your victory is welcome, as is the cargo you seized. Now, about your payment. Wait, this mysterious cargo was a bunch of really heavy crates. Would you tell me what they contained? That? Your job was delivered the cargo. You've no need to investigate further. But Princess Alencia has returned to her quarters. You would do well to inform her of your safe return. It appears that the Apostle will handle your payment on the morrow. Perhaps you can speak with her then. I beg your leave. I must be going. Very well. Oh! Cutscene time! Dude's a tank. Why is there always an anime character with hair that, like, they primp? Chunky music. Thank you all for coming, my fellow Lagoos Kings. It's been decades since all of us were gathered in one place. I would extend my gratitude to King of Goldoa, who arranged this meeting place at short notice. It was nothing, King Canagus. Fellow kings and countrymen, attend to my words. As you no doubt have heard, Dayan has invaded Crimea and overrun her. Of course, Crimea is a Beork nation. However, since the time of her founding, she has made every effort to engage the Lagoos with honor and dignity. Never has this been more true done than during the 30-year reign of good King Ramon. During this era, Gallia and Crimea initiated many ambitious cultural projects in an attempt to bring our divided people closer. Yet one man has always reviled our work, the Dayan King Ashnar. Why he took this recent course, however, I know not. Ashnar's actions are monstrous. His army has put much of Crimea to the sword. Her people live in terror, her king lies dead. And now the Dayan forces continue their ruinous march and cross the border into Lagoo's territory, into Gallia. That trespass, O King of Lions, is because your country chooses to harbor King Kremia's orphan, is it not? 
Yes, that is the justification they would present. But the Princess of Crimea is no longer in Gallia, is she? Your spies are as efficient as ever, King Tibern of Phoenicius. As you say, the Princess has already departed for Begnian. I know this is only because she came to the aid of the ship carrying Begnian's apostle. So Princess Valencia is safe in contact with the Begnian Empire? That's news. That news gladdens my heavy heart. I do not believe that Dayan ha yet has this information. If word got out that the Princess of Crimea has been granted sanctuary in Begnia and Dayan might halt its invasion of Gallia. Your information is dated, Hawk King. Have your legendary eyes and ears abandoned you after all these years? You have something you wish to say? Would you be so kind as to explain yourself, King Kilvus? Princess Alincia barely escaped Crimea with her life, then fled to Gallia. And yet a certain king of beasts there, one on whom she pinned all hope, chose not to support her. With nowhere else to turn, the princess and her retinue spent two long months at sea, arriving in Begnian mere days ago. Dayan knows of these events as well, and the king has dispatched a team of hunters to make a corpse of the girl. And that, dear kings, is the latest news, at least to the best of my poor knowledge. Dayan knows the princess is in Begnian? King Kilvus, how did you come to possess this information? Because he's a weirdo. You expect us to believe that a stray wind carried it to your ears? This is an odd tale, Nasela. Do you think so? Well, there's one trick of, to information gathering that I know. Shall I share it with you? If it involves de dealing with human scum, I'll pass. Forgoing my Laguz pride is not something I'm willing to do. Ha! Is that not always the way of Phoenicius to cling to those last tattered remnants of pride? Instead of proclaiming that you will attack none but Begnian ships, just admire that you don't have the power to do more. Or admit that you don't have the power to do more. What did you say? Both of you will desist at once. King Nasela of Kilvis, your actions of late can indeed be judged as too extreme. Black Dragon King of Goldoa, what do you pretend to know of my actions? Please enlighten me. I would remind you of the Bjork ship you attacked in Phoenician waters and left stranded in Goldoan territory. Oh, that. Nasela, you lying crow, you've been sneaking about in my territory again, have you? I heard from my own son, Kurth Naga, that a Bjork resembling Princess Crimea was on board that ship. It is true. What can kill the you? Don't act surprised, I have no intention of ruling some tiny island nation forever. I will make Kilvis a name to remember. To that end, no amount of gold is enough. Laguz or Bjork, I care not. If the pay is right, there's nothing I won't do. I care not about the reach of your ambition, but you should choose your methods with more care. What good will it do to expand your domain only to find enemies at your every border? I will take your words to heart for the time being. And you too, King Phoenicius. What good will your piracy do if it earns the wrath of Begnian? Continue at this pace and there's no telling when the hostilities will end. Until the people of Begnian apologize for the slaughter of our brother Herons, I will do no such thing. Princess Racin of Serenes, are you the same of mind? Those humans burned Serene's forest and killed my people. No amount of human blood can slake my thirst for vengeance. For my siblings, for my countrymen, I demand justice. I cannot even return to my bedridden father to our forest home. I am no soldier. I know nothing of war, so King Phoenicius acts in my stead. I am most grateful to him, and I would not see him stop until Begnian has paid. Blood leads only to blood, and violence begets violence. Nothing more. Revenge is simply another name for murder. And you, King of Lions, what will you do about your home of Gallia? Now that you know Dane's feint toward Gallia is merely another move in his game of war, how will you act? They've made no formal declaration of war until they do, we watch and wait. If it's the first step towards eradicating all human scum, Phoenicius will help you destroy Dayan. No, unless this becomes a true war among all nations, I want you to stay your hand. As long as Gallia is protected by the Sea of Trees, we can stave off Dayan's attacks. 
Ah, the luxury of a large nation. You would waste a chance to expand your territory just to maintain the status quo? Sad. I agree with King Gallia. If we were to form a Laguz alliance against Dayan, we would drive Begni into Dayan's side and lose a valuable ally. The flames of war cannot be fanned haphazardly. Above all, we must think of Leron's medallion. Its location is unknown. But it still exists, we know this, and as long as it does, we cannot allow any war that could stand to engulf all our nations. Do you understand, Laguz Kings? I beg of you, do not forget it. Oh boy, the reading. Alright, we got 600 bonus experience again. There we go. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, we'll... That's long enough. We'll start all this, the Feral Frontier, next time. Thanks for watching, and take care.